Welcome back to First Acacia. Time to take a look at headlines around the region with a new guest today, Claudia Craig, a foreign correspondent and author of the new Taipan, Taipans. Uh, welcome, Claudia. Thanks for joining us this Thank morning. Thank you very much for having me, Patrick. Uh, we're starting off with news on President Obama's visit to uh, the Philippines, uh, or to South Korea first, actually, uh, where he touched on the sensitive topic of comfort women used by Japan during the Second World War. And our first article is from Today News. Paper Obama calls on South Korea, Japan to mend ties while noting comfort women past. Uh, the headline from the Japan Times in Seoul, Obama urges Japan to settle terrible sex slave issue. Uh, and our final article from the Korea Times, Obama calls spade spade on Japan's sex slavery. It says the president's remarks, quote, stunned Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe, apparently making Japan wonder how to deal with it. How surprised do you think Japan was uh, about Not the remarks? All, Patrick. Not at all. I mean, this has gone on for a great many years. And, you know, it's one of those things people don't really like to talk about because it has that word in it. So this is comfort women. Well, why do we call it comfort women? There was no comfort for them. This is an issue that has gone on for a long time that is never truly discussed and explored except occasionally the lightning rod, rod that Obama is he comes and people throw up these issues. So really something has to be done about it. Now last night on Channel News Asia there was a marvellous programme, I don't know if you saw it, about Korea and families divided. So this is alive and in people's minds still and yet nobody really wants to sit down and discuss what happened with these sex slaves because that's most certainly But you don't think it's a surprise that he mentioned this after coming from Tokyo and, he, uh, and bearing in mind he made no mention of uh, uh, the Yasukuni war shrine after uh, Prime Minister Abe had, had uh, donated uh, a plant to the shrine. He's a very polite man. He's very, his mother did a very good job. <laughs> you know, he's very polite. You don't insult your host. You leave and then you're going to the offended country and you say, you know, it really was terrible that, was, wasn't it? We must do something about it. Indeed, we must do something about it. The point about the Yasukuni Shrine is that those motifs, the old imperial flag, is still used politically in Japan. So it doesn't go away. They pick and choose what they use from the era. And yet older women in Korea are haunted. This was an ongoing rape. This was not comfort. Mm. How significant, though, is it that Barack Obama has um, uh, called a spade spade, as his article says? Because it is the first time that a U.S. president has officially criticised Japan over this. Um, I think that politicians are told now that if you don't men mention it, you're going to get whacked when you come home. He has a huge female constituency in America. He has people who will be depending on him to bring it up and to say what about those women but I think what the Japanese and Koreans need to do is sort it out work out what these women need to put it right you can't put it right but a serious discussion not some little lip service I think is what we're seeing right now do you think Obama is just all saying the right things to the right people at the right times though when he was in Japan he was talking about how US was with Japan uh, in its territorial disputes with China then he goes to Korea and he's talking about that is he just saying nice things I mean what what can he actually Actually, do in this in this sort of context, he can't do anything, can he? Well, Steve, I think if we knew that, we could advise him better. Mm. But I, I, we're not in a position to do that. He has to be all things to all people. That is the nature of the beast. The politician has to say the right things at the right time to get invited again mm. and to play at the party with the other children. You have to do what is required, and I think this is the party he's at. Uh, in, in the Today article, it actually says that Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe recognises that the past must be acknowledged in full. Do you think that's the case? Well, I referred to the use of the old imperial flag. That is a lightning rod to a great many people, older Singaporeans, many people. That, that hasn't changed in the fact that it's still used. You know, those are sweet words. Those are aisatsu. In Japan, you say always what is required of you. Gomen nasai. You keep saying, I'm very sorry, you know, I understand. But do something. Action is required, not pretty talk. They've got to do something about these women who are old and haunted every day. Do you see that happening, though? Do I see it happening? I can hope. We mm. can hope. Yeah, because I they don't do. seem to want to come and talk, talk about it at all. Well, did we think that the reunification of the families from North and South Korea that we saw on Channel News Asia last night would happen? That is an extraordinary event. I mean, it could not have happened under Kim Jong-un, but it did. 
they got those families together. That was a miracle. Mm. So I think things are possible. Dialogue is always possible. Aside from expectations at home, what other incentive is there for the US to, US to weigh in on this topic, do you think? 2016. 2016, the election began the moment 2012 finished. It's all about constituency politics. It's about lining your ducks up. He can't afford President Obama to alienate the women vote. It is too powerful. And it, it's very much up in the air. If the Republicans feel the very strong female candidate, we don't know, um, then the Democrats could be in trouble. So it's all about laying the path going forward so no one can come back and say, you didn't mention this, you didn't sort this out. I think it's a trailblazing for 2016. Okay, well, let's, uh, let's turn our attention now to our next story from The Guardian uh, with the headline, headline, South Korean Prime Minister resigns. Uh, there has been an outpouring of criticism over the handling of the Sewol sinking as uh, Chung Hong Won says he must go for the sake of the government. You mentioned just now of a sincere apology and then taking action uh, with regard to our previous story. This seems to be uh, what has been playing out here. Very much, Steve. I think it's a bit of a sacrificial lamb. But I remember when I first got to Japan in 1978, people would regularly jump out of buildings and it was because shares had dived which seems incomprehensible maybe to many people. You don't see that in Singapore. It's a code of honor. So Mr. Chung has to fall on his sword. It is a Korean noble thing to do. But what is required is a serious look at the legislation that doesn't control cargo going into passenger ferries. That is the issue at the core of this. Mm. What load was on that boat? Yeah, mm. because we've heard uh, reports that there was, it was overloaded. And well, three and a half thousand tons apparently, and nobody's really checking it. So even the people they're now prosecuting for abandoning the boat, all those things are appalling. But the issue at the heart of it is what was on that boat? Is it compatible? We see f ferry disasters all the time. The Philippines, Indonesia, overloaded ferries. To, no one knows what the manifest has. No one knows what's on the boat and it goes down with people families, lives destroyed. Mm, so I guess they want the investigations to be quite thorough and speedy as well. Well, the opposition have said, you know, this, um, the Prime Minister resigning is just an easy way out. They've called it for the President uh, to issue an apology. Um, will that help in any way? Uh, I, I don't know. I'm a mother and if my children had been on that boat, I'd say thank you very much. But what now? Mm. My children died because of corporate or negligence or irresponsibility or forgetfulness but I want to know why they died there are so many this is a common thread we're seeing now we're not getting answers mm. you know it's corporate dominance which is fine corporations have their work to do but when people are dying as a result of it I think it's very important that questions are answered not just some sacrificial lamb and with that sorted. But, but yeah, would you blame the government specifically or uh, do you think that's maybe a bit unfair? No, I, I think blame is too easy. I think we often saw in Japan people taking blame, people stepping down, people even committing suicide and then okay well he's gone so it's sorted. No, it isn't. The hard questions remain to be answered. There needs to be more transparency, more accountability. Absolutely. Yeah. But not in, the, not in terms of corporate interference. It's not what I'm suggesting. But that's a very dangerous situation and one that goes on too often. Mm. Okay. Uh, it does say in, in the article, actually, there are too many irregularities and malpractices in, in parts of society that have been with us too long. Do you think that's an inherent <laughs> problem with the government and, and, and the way it operates? I, I thought that was... Um, it's an extraordinary statement because in that catch-all, I mean, are we going to deal with everything? Could we mm. just deal with the ferry? People lost their children, their precious children from one school. The principal killed himself. Mm. This is an iniquitous tragedy that shouldn't have happened. That is the point. The whole of society, let's just focus. Mm. Focus. Let's get this worked out. So it doesn't happen again. Mm. Well, indeed, I think the Prime Minister is going to stay on until the job is done, according to the President. Let's move on to our next story. Uh, we couldn't ignore this one this morning, to be honest. Pasted all over the homepage of Huffington Post, Clipper Revolt. Los Angeles Clippers basketball is taking a stand against the team owner who was caught on tape making racist remarks. And TMZ reports that this was the picture 
just have a look here, that triggered uh, Donald Sterling to request that his girlfriend not bring black people to his games, nor post pictures of black people on Instagram. Now, Claudia, the president has even weighed in on this issue. It is a big issue, isn't it? And the players themselves have decided to take their own stand. Well, President Obama in some quarters has been at the receiving end of exactly this kind of racism. You know that. Everybody knows that. People point to his Kenyan father. But this is an extraordinary story, and I'm so glad you picked it, because every time you see an ugly old man with a cute girlfriend, it's not going to work. It's just not going to work. <laughs> he owns the LA Clippers. He has nothing going for him, like several other people I could mention, but I won't. He has nothing going for him. She's a good-looking girl. I'd like to take her and say, what are you doing? Mm. What are you doing yes. with him? And, and then the players just reversing their jerseys. Is that it? When she was told not to bring Magic Johnson to a game, not to Instagram him, not to do this, what is he thinking? This is a throwback to mm. some sort of warped colonialism. I thought had gone out with the dinosaurs. Mm. But it's shocking. In the alleged conversation that was recorded, and we heard it on the internet, we were playing it this morning, um, the girlfriend points out, did you know that I'm actually mixed? I'm Mexican mm. and black. And he seemed to kind of just ignore that completely. As I would say, you go, girlfriend. But, you know, she is. And at some point, she has compromised herself. And in the tape, you hear her saying, I'm sorry. Mm. I'm sorry. Don't be sorry. Mm. Leave him. Go away. This is extraordinary racism, and we're lucky to see it. Mm. Thanks for social media, we know that this kind of thing still goes on. Mm. It seems a bit okay. strange then that he would be an owner of a basketball team which is, has primarily black athletes uh, throughout the sport in the NBA, and then for him to feel uh, that kind of reaction or Well, it's a bit like a slaves and masters, isn't it? I mean, if you owned a plantation and you had people worked on it, they were clearly that side of the door. Mm. I think it's a bit like that. And, and he has a history in litigation of racism. Mm. Well, we see racism rear its ugly head in sport. Um, but sport is also a way to overcome that racism in a way, isn't it? How do you think they can kind of turn this around? Well, I think dialogue is everything. I mean, as you say, sport is exactly the perfect medium to bring people together to get over these prejudices. I think by raising it and showing that this still goes on in 2014, mm. I mean, it's Uncle Tom's cabin, for goodness sake, <laughs> and with no apologies from his part. He says you can do whatever you like, but don't post your photo with them on Instagram. So my friends call me. This is what got him, that mm. his friends called him. Mm. Well, it's mm. not the only incident of racism today. Uh, earlier this morning, uh, Barcelona had a game, and their right back, Dani Alves, uh, had a banana thrown in his direction while he was taking a corner. His reaction was he took the banana, ate it, threw it to the ground, and then mm. carried on playing. But it's a very different dialogue in Europe. It, it, it is, it is. In Europe, I think we've, we've aired this. We've had our dirty laundry, and, and we keep exploring it, keep discussing it. In America, it's, oh, no, we don't really. We're not racist at all. This this shows you're racist when you're caught mm. and social media exposes it and I think it's a good thing let's all talk mm. all right well thank you very much indeed for that so great having you on the show this morning thank you very much uh, to discuss those topics uh, Claudia Craig foreign correspondent and author of the new Taipans there speaking to us